Today is Friday, May 1st. Friday, May 1st, and it is? It's phone in sick day. Woohoo, so calling to work. It's also <laughs> Wes Anderson's? Wes Anderson's birthday. Should we, let's stand like, a, like two Wes Anderson characters. I'm Alexandria. This is Michael. Today is ice cream day, and this is the whole measure. We like ice cream. Yeah, we like ice cream a lot. We've been looking forward to this episode. My favorite ice cream is actually an ice cream that's available here in Kansas City from a place called Betty Ray's. They make, oh, yeah. it's, what is it? It's goat cheese. Goat cheese and apricot. And candied walnuts. And candied So it's goat cheese, apricot, candied walnuts. Oh, I have a Betty Ray's shirt I could have worn. You do have a Betty Ray's shirt. Let's check it out. Right on. We'll put a link to Betty Ray's in the description. If you're ever in Kansas City, give Betty Ray's a shot for sure. If you're new to the show, what we do here is make a recipe two different ways. We make it one way that's very simple and one way that's a little more complicated and we let you know whether the more complicated one is worth the time and effort. The simple one we're doing today is actually from Martha Stewart, which I'm very excited about. I love Martha Stewart and yeah. I love ice cream. Uh, her method is very simple, no special equipment required. And then the other way is with a regular ice cream machine. We'll be making a traditional ice cream base that has like eggs and it needs to be cooked and all that. I think we should get started. Are you, are you excited? Yes. We are gonna have so much ice cream in the house. The first recipe I chose is from Martha Stewart's website. It only has three ingredients and I'll be honest, I'm a little skeptical. All of my ice cream making experience has been much more complicated than this. You start by whisking two cups of heavy cream together with two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. I'm using a stand mixer, but this could be done with a handheld machine or by hand with a whisk. Whisk until it holds stiff peaks and set aside. In a large bowl, empty the 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk and fold in your cream mixture. You do have to be very gentle while doing this. You can easily deflate the cream and you want this mixture to retain as much air as possible. Once your evaporated milk is completely incorporated, pour this mixture into a loaf pan. I tried to give some really nice swirls so that Martha would be proud of me for getting that this was gonna be covered in plastic wrap, like all the way down to the cream. She knows I tried, that's all that counts. Place this in your freezer for six hours or preferably overnight. This ice cream has to harden before you can serve it, but when you're ready, it actually scoops really well. This is where my skepticism started to melt away for this recipe. It tastes great. It has fantastic texture, which we will learn later is the real trick to making homemade ice cream. It was super simple. And what's more important is that this is a great canvas to paint all of your ice cream dreams onto. Swirl in some chocolate or put some Oreos up in here. Gummy bears? Why not? This ice cream is fun and easy to make and will give you plenty of room to be creative. Let's give it a taste. We should try the Martha Stewart one first. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. This is just straight up OG vanilla. Three ingredients. You saw, do you remember how quickly that one I, I made? Yes. How quickly I made that? Oh, Martha. <laughs> it's really solid. Yeah. It's better. I, I thought it would be good and it's even better than, than I thought. It definitely has the like, you can taste like the vanilla extract flavor. The old palate cleanser. Yeah, I don't feel like you need very much of that. Which, that's totally it's not very bad rich. Thing. Yeah. I think for the amount of effort that that took, that's a pretty good payoff. Like it's pretty comparable to very cheap ice cream. You can feel that there's a lot of air. It's mm -hmm. like whipped, and it mostly is. It's whipped. It I, feels like whipped cream. Yeah, I felt like that was the the thing that stuck out the most was like the texture. Texture. What it. do you feel like the texture felt like? But whipped, I think, is what whipped and like is kind what of fluffy I want texture. to say. It was fun. It's something you could definitely do with the, with kids, um, and it's cheap. Like that can of evaporated milk is like a dollar. Yeah, if you want to go through the motions of like making your own ice cream. That's a really quick way to do it. You could even do it like on a Saturday morning and have it for dinner by that by that night. Well, don't, you could eat the ice cream for dinner, I guess. You could have it af for after dinner. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, we're adults. <laughs> we have our own apartment and money. But yeah, I think next we need to try Yeah. the, the full measure <laughs> ice cream. These are the ingredients to make your ice cream, or rather, a creme on glaze. Surprise, today is a French lesson in disguise. Before we begin, I want to take a second to make some important notes. 
Ice cream making is akin to baking bread or brewing in that it can seem deceptively simple but is actually very nuanced. That said, you can make some really good ice cream on your first try. But much like brewing and baking, every single variable can have a very significant impact. There are some really great YouTube videos that dive into the intermediate and expert levels of making ice cream. I am certainly not an expert. Definitely trust those folks if you really want to dive deep into this hobby. Okay, disclaimer over. Thank you for your patience. Making ice cream is a great opportunity to learn how to separate egg yolks. You get six chances with this recipe. No need for the weird soda bottle trick or anything. This is very simple and just involves passing the yolk back and forth between the two halves of the shell. Each time it passes, you drain off a little of the white. Let's do that again and take another look. If you try this yourself, you'll immediately feel that the whites more or less do the work themselves. No worries here if you nick a yolk because we're just going to whisk them to combine at the end. Another prep task we have to do is to scrape the seeds from a vanilla pod. This can be a little bit tricky, but you want to run your knife down the length of the pod, only cutting one side. Try not to split it in half. Ultimately, we just want to open it up and use our knife to scrape out all that dark stuff that kind of looks like dirt. That's the good stuff the vanilla seeds. And I treat them as if they're good as gold, because this single pod was like 12 bucks, so they kind of are. In a medium saucepan over medium heat, add two cups of whole milk, one cup of heavy cream, two thirds of a cup of sugar, and an eighth of a teaspoon of fine sea salt. Oh, and your expensive vanilla, even the pod. Stir to help the sugar and the salt dissolve. Warm this mixture for about five minutes. You'll be using this mixture to help cook your whisked egg yolks. Add the milk very slowly and keep the yolk moving. This is called tempering. You are trying to bring the eggs up to temperature without cooking them rapidly or harshly. Go slowly and be patient, this step is very important. Once you have about half the cream mixture stirred into the yolk, it's safe to add the eggs to the saucepan. Continue whisking until fully combined and keep over a medium heat. We want to cook this very gently. Stir frequently and have a thermometer ready. Once the mixture reaches 170 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit removed from the heat, the last step is to strain out all the solids and vanilla pods. Let's go ahead and try to pour this out of the pot with some confidence. Okay, well, that was horrible. I was actually trying to pour it into the measuring cup so I wouldn't make a mess while I was straining it, but here we are. I got the mess cleaned up and finished straining through a fine mesh sieve. It'll catch all the solids from the vanilla pod, but it'll let the seeds pass through. Place this mixture into a container or a mixing bowl covered in plastic wrap, and then put it in your refrigerator overnight. We want this mixture to get as cold as possible before we churn it. I also made a second batch because I have a few different ice cream flavors I want to try out. I know a question you're asking yourself, and the answer is yes. I definitely spilled the other batch as well. This is my ice cream maker. It's very basic. It's the type that has the canister that you have to keep frozen in the fridge. I usually just leave it in there all the time. To churn your ice cream, turn the machine on and have it spinning as you pour your creme anglaise into the machine. My machine takes about 20 minutes, which we will speed through real quick. After 20 minutes, it will be the consistency of soft serve ice cream. The ice cream will have increased in volume by about 20%. This is from all the air we're incorporating through the churning, and it's called overrun. This is what makes ice cream stay creamy. You can eat it as is, but it's best to put this in your freezer for about 4 hours or overnight. Normally, you would add your mix-ins while you still have the machine running. I'm making several batches here, so I'm just going to mix everything in the container. Speaking of, you should keep your ice cream in something airtight and plastic. Glass works okay too. One of the most difficult parts of making ice cream is keeping the ice crystals as small as possible. Quick freezing time helps with that. I did a quick poll on Facebook before we ran this episode and cookies and cream seemed to be one of the more popular options. I also made a stracciatella version by microwaving some chocolate chips and using a whisk to make some thin wispy strands of chocolate. I made a version for myself with the ribbon of peanut butter because that's my all-time favorite ice cream topping. I also added some chocolate for good measure. Lastly, one ice cream mix-in I've been so excited to try is biscuits. We have some left over from our last video and I took this idea from Jenny's. I can't wait to see the results. I added a little ribbon of honey in there to give it the full biscuit experience. I've made a lot of ice cream in this machine and I'm usually happy with the results I get. Is it perfect? No. Is it better than store-bought? Again, no. Is it fun to make? Yes. That's the whole point, I think. Unless you're going to spend a ton of money on an expensive machine and start getting real deep on ice cream stabilizers, you will likely not be able to make a batch that compares exactly to the excellent craft ice creams you can buy at any store. But it is a great opportunity to try some flavors you don't normally find. And it's also just really fun to make ice cream by hand. What does stracciatella mean in Italian? Skinny chocolate strings. Right. This is the like 
least flavored one, so you'll be able to taste like just the base. Um, but let's give this a try. Fish we add up tiny spoons. It's more dense, but it's still very creamy. Um, it feels more high end to me. Uh, what do you think about the flavor? Like, how does the flavor compare to the other one? Oh, it feels a little bit more. It's definitely more rich. Layers. That's what you say. Layers. There, there feels like there's more layers to it. Where that other one is just like vanilla, sweet. sweet. Vanilla, sweet. Yeah, this one feels like, okay, I get it. There's some stuff going on here. To compare real vanilla to vanilla extract is like a very odd, they're almost like not the same flavor. Right. Vanilla extract tastes like vanilla extract and real vanilla tastes like vanilla. Now that I think back to that first one, yeah, it does. It tastes like... Like cupcake flavor. Yeah, like the smell of a cupcake candle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's okay. try the let's try the peanut butter one. <laughs> peanut butter and ice cream is my absolute favorite combination. This one is has a peanut butter and a chocolate swirl. That tastes like some ice cream we got from the store. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. That was a good balance in there. But I and I feel like sometimes when you get peanut butter ice cream from the store, it's the ice cream itself is too sugary, and the yeah. peanut butter is also too sugary, so it's just like, oh, and then you can only have like a few bites, and it's just it, yeah, so it's just much. too much. The next flavor is was a crowd favorite when I posted to Facebook. Uh, there were so many really good answers. A lot of people said like lavender and stuff like that, and oh, I like yeah. those types of ice creams, but I definitely wanted to find something that, I know there's probably some people that don't like cookies and cream. But it's just but like, kind of like. It's such a classic. Classic, but it's also like, that's a very accessible flavor. Yeah. That looks good. <laughs> why is it so, like, why is the ice cream like a yellow? Is that just the. Because of the, cu it's custard. It's custard. It, there's egg Maybe there's that's six why I like it there. so much. But does it taste eggy? No. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. That's like the best cookies and cream I've ever had. <laughs> I'm so excited about this biscuit one. God, what if it's not very good? There's no way it won't be good. Okay. <laughs> so let's try the one with biscuits in it. All right, let me try. Oh, it's very subtle, but it's really good. It doesn't hit you at first. You finish with the bread. Yeah. And a biscuit is like also very rich and but I mean it's buttery, but the honey in there too. It's this is definitely interesting. I don't think that like every person would be like, I need some biscuits in my ice cream, but that is. With the honey though, it it's a very like, I don't know what this is called, but like when you have like the full range of, of like, flavor like in that bite. Ice cream should always be fun because it's ice cream. It's not healthy. Like you're just having right. a fun thing. And making ice cream is a ton of fun. This is our chart of worthiness that measures how much effort you put into a recipe versus how much payoff it gives. The simple Martha Stewart recipe was extremely easy and took almost no effort. It's been a couple days since I made it and I've kind of gone back and forth on where to rank this. I think if you wanna make ice cream at home and mix in a bunch of stuff and just have a great fun dessert, this is the recipe for you. Making ice cream from scratch is a little more work. The flavor is much better, but I truly think that the texture on the easy recipe was a little bit better than what I normally get making ice cream from scratch. Making ice cream can be very simple and very easy, or it can be very complicated and nuanced. For me, I may actually be using the Martha Stewart recipe a little more often because the results were way better than I thought that they would be. And a lot of times when I make ice cream at home, it's because I want to try something fun and I'm not all that concerned with making something perfect. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you could give us a little like and a subscribe down below, we would really appreciate it. We would also love to hear from you in the comments. What's your favorite ice cream? What do you order when you go to your local ice cream shop? What do you put in your ice cream when you make it at home? We would also really love to hear what recipes would you like for us to try? We got a couple of really good responses on the last video. That gave me some ideas of what we can try next. So please let us know down below if there's any recipes you'd like to see us try. And again, thank you for watching this video. Thank you.